party, them one divide us, make us a mockery. Smash them to ground like crackery. God, you want with no vacancy. Unfruitfulness, no produce, no quality. Don't be so shallow, slimy and slippery. Never use your ego to promote your jealousy. God is love. Even when my best friends walk away, he's here to stay every night and day. It's gonna be okay. That's why I say we have to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, greetings to everybody. God bless you. Today, I want to talk about the love of Christ, the intimacy that we have to have with him. I will read from Matthew, Matthew 22, from verses 37 to 39. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Praise the Lord. Um, Intimacy, relationship with God is the paramount thing. It's very, very, very important. Uh, is what we, is out of that relationship that everything else goes. Is Many people do it backwards, thinking when we do something, that qualifies us to be a child of God. No, we are sons and daughters of God first. And from there, from our inheritances, we can now do things. It's not the other way around. People think, oh, maybe if I go to school and I become a pastor, then I can qualify as a child of God. No, that's backwards. We have to be a child of God first, a son and daughter, and then all the inheritances, all, the, all that God has is for us. We do not have to prove anything. That is what the devil wanted Jesus to prove. In Matthew 3, God already told Jesus uh, that this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. In Matthew 4, the, the devil came and said, if you are indeed the son of God, turn this stone to bread. That is the other way. Jesus is already the son of God. He didn't have to prove anything to the devil. He didn't have to turn that stone to bread to show the devil that he's the son of God. That's the same thing. Once we are sons, children, sons and daughters of God, then from there we be, we are able to do whatever we are supposed to do. It is from that, it is that means that the Holy Spirit continually used to supply our heart with power. Yes, the intimacy is very important. The relationship, a lot of people want to hear the voice of God, but it starts from relationship. Like if a husband and a wife are together and they hear each other from relationship, talking to each other daily, even if that husband speaks in a very big crowd, the wife would be able to pick the voice of the husband. So hearing the voice of God starts from relationship, starts from sitting at his feet, spending time in his presence. Praise the Lord. Also, I want to read the story, a nice story that you are familiar with in the Bible. is the story of Mary and Martha. And it's in Luke chapter 10 from verses 33 to 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his voice. Mary and Martha. Verse 40. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her, therefore, that she should help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you are too careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yes. It is obvious from three places in the Bible that Mary is a great worshiper. Mary likes sitting at the feet of Jesus. He likes, he likes that she likes being at the feet of Jesus. Excuse me. Mary, she likes being at the feet of Jesus. Um, the verse 38. Now it came to pass. As they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received her into her house. So this is Martha's house, and Mary is his sister, staying there. But Martha, Mary, and Lazarus were great followers of Jesus. So when you turn to that Luke 10, 38 to 44, you'll see that they, they welcomed Jesus into their house. When you go also to... John 11, John chapter 11, verses 1 to 44. We see in John 3, 11, 1 to 44, too, that Mary came under the feet of Jesus. So also is John 12, 1 to 3. We will read it later. So um, they opened their house and invited Jesus in. Jesus was going towards Jerusalem. He was close to the Passover period. And he got to Bethany, which is about two miles before Jerusalem. And he has just passed through Samaria. Samaria was a place where they didn't welcome Jews. So maybe it was a little bit um, just stressful journeying across. And then Mary's house was on the way and Martha, and he stopped there. And um, the Bible says that uh, Mary and Martha, they recognized him, they welcomed him. It wasn't hated, so a lot of people hated Jesus Christ. But Mary and Martha always welcomed him into, into their house with open arms and with love. So he came, he came in, and um, the older sister, the owner of the house, was the one that first came. You know the excitement that could be if a president of a country stops at your house? How excited you want to do everything to please that president and so on. How much more? the president of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ showed up at the house of Mary and Martha. I, I can imagine Martha saying, Mary, 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 come quick. Master is here. And immediately they went to him and they wanted to start attending to his needs immediately. But Mary and Martha expressed their love in different ways. Martha went into the kitchen, getting busy, doing activities, trying to prepare food, maybe bake bread, maybe bake cake, just to make Jesus comfortable. But Mary sat. The Bible says Mary sat by the feet of Jesus, listening to everything that Jesus would say. She wasn't worried about cooking. She just wanted to be in the presence of Jesus. Um, Martha was very energetic. She was going up and down, cooking, running, baking, to a crashing pots and so on. But Mary was calm, sensitive, and a listener, just sat at the feet of Jesus. Mary appeared three times in scripture, in different episodes, whereby she sat at the feet of Jesus. In Luke 10, 39, it says, and she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his voice, a word. That's the one, and that is an act of worship. John eleven thirty two. 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been there, my brother had not died. The third one was John 12, 3. It says, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Another worship. She reflected humility, reverence, teachability, worship, all the good qualities of a good disciple. But one thing catches me all the time when I'm reading the Bible, uh, especially that John 11, 32, what Mary did, what Mary did provoke the attention of Jesus. Okay, from in, in John, John 11, when Jesus showed up, 
Mary, I'm reading from verse 20. Uh, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Mary was still sitting still. Martha ran. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, Your brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Believe thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. And when she said she had said so, she went her way. That didn't do any much. She went her way, saying, Master is come and call it for thee. She went to Mary to call Mary. But when we get to verse 29, as soon as she heard that, Mary went and went to him. Look at the difference. Mary worshipped. Now, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying she went to the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come, where Jesus was, and saw him, look at what she did. She fell down at his feet. She worshipped, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Look, they said the same things, but with different action. Martha said her own, and Jesus uh, gave us some teaching about uh, 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 is the resurrection, and she went her way. But look at what Mary, Mary worshipped, bowed down, and said the same thing that Martha said. If thou had been here, my brother had not died. Look, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came to her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. So that, that provoked something and said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see Jesus wept. That the worship provokes something in Jesus. Every time we worship, something happens. Remember the man of Gadaren that was really, really crazy. They said they couldn't chain him down. But when he saw Jesus, he, 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 he worshipped and he was healed. The same thing with that woman that had a child that was sick, that uh, Jesus Christ said, God didn't send me to you. Um, a dog or about something dog eating. And he said even a dog will eat the crumple. She worshipped, and her daughter was well at the end of the day. Even so, it was um, uh, 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 Jairus. When Jairus looked at her, she came. She fell at the feet of. He came. He fell at the feet of Jesus, and 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 the baby and the daughter arose again. Every time we worship, we provoke a kind of reaction. Something happens. Something happens. Same same thing. When Job lost everything that he had in one day, the Bible recorded that he worshipped. But by the time we get to Job 42, verse 10, God restored him double. Same thing with David. When David lost um, that child that Bathsheba had for him after he had fasted seven days and the baby still died, the Bible recorded that he worshipped. And God restored. God restored. God restored double. More than double, God gave him the wisest and the richest man, Solomon. <laughs> so when God restores, he gives back a lot and worship provokes. Anyway, going back to the story of Mary and Martha, so it, it, Ma, uh, Martha was energetic, doing things. Mary just sat at the feet of Jesus. And um, as we read, read the story, when Martha was accusing uh, Mary and Jesus, he was saying, Jesus, can't you do something about it? And Mary was saying, uh, Mary was said, 
Mary, Mary, Mary was just sitting at the feet of Jesus, and he, was, he also accused Mary, oh, you are slothful, you are, you, are, you are not working, you are not doing anything. But Jesus said, but one thing, one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good path, which shall not be taken from her. One thing remains, one thing. One thing. God's love will never give up. Yes. He will never give up on us. The love of Christ. One thing remains. And Mary has chosen that one thing. Even though matter was going, going, going. But Mary chose the one thing. One thing remains, and Mary chose that one thing, the love of Christ. The love of Christ, he never fails. He never runs out. He never gives up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Mary sat by the feet of Jesus. Whereas Martha was hyperactive and Mary was worshipping, but Martha was worried. Mary was at peace. Martha was panicking. Mary was sitting while Martha was stewing. And Mary was listening. Martha was lashing out. She was mad. She was angry. Yes, she was filled with multitude of details. At the end of the day, and Jesus told him, told her one thing. The, and it will not be taken. And John 6, 27 says, We should labor not for the meat that perishes, but the meat that endureth unto eternity is what we should labor for. That sitting at the feet of Jesus is still eternity. Whatever Mary was doing at the feet of Jesus is still eternity. But what Martha was doing will end after the meal. But what Jesus was saying is that the main cause of the meal is that fellowship. The fellowship with him, the relationship with him, he values that. That sitting down, that one is eternal. It will, it will is forever. It cannot be taken away from her. You, you, all the activities that we do, oh, I'm going on TV station, I'm going to do this program, I'm going to do that program, is very paramount that we force him, seek ye first, Matthew 6.33, the kingdom of God and all the rest, everything else shall follow. So we have to choose that for that time. We can get so busy that we are running around and there's not that one time that we need to spend in the presence of the Lord. He said in Psalm 37 verse 4 that as we delight in God, He gives us our heart desire. It's that time of delighting, fellowshipping, spending time with Him. That is when we get His heart desires put into our heart desires and our will now becomes His will. It, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Mary was, um, was doing the best thing. The best thing. Martha was saying, I can't believe she's not in the kitchen with me. She was so angry. She was like Mary. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said, she has taken the best part. The better part of the meal. Yes, it's priorities. It's choice. We have to make the, our time we spend with Jesus number one. Number one. And because that is a permanent part of our life. That is what Jesus was telling me, a matter regarding Mary. That will not be taken away from her. That's a permanent, it's quite a promise. It's good to sit at the feet of Jesus. It's good to sit. We cannot be, it, uh, Jesus told Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. Uh, Mary are choosing that good part that will not be taken from her. Jesus wanted Martha to focus on what was even more important. He will not always be in their house. So while he's in their house, it's very important to spend time with Jesus, to spend time. Sometimes our doing, 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 doing things, running around without really sitting at the feet of Jesus can be tainted with pride, arrogance, 
felt important. Occupation with Jesus is one needful thing. That good part which shall not be taken away from us. Yes, it's that good part that will not, all the outward activities are good, but that one good part, we cannot not do it. We, joyful intimacy with God is the great power source of the kingdom of God. It is the main thing by which the Holy Spirit continually supplies the heart with power. Yes, we have to be engaged with him, spend time with him. Yes, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what is here the father do. It's from sitting with him that we see what he's doing and what he wants us to do. Praise the Lord, because of time I will end up here. But what he's saying is that it's a gazing heart that looks unto Jesus, that hears what he's saying, that heart learns, enjoys, and becomes a wholehearted lover of God. Yes, I pray that the love of God will fill you and you will love God. You will love him with everything that you, are, that you have. He said we should love him with everything, everything, everything. He said, therefore, God, my father loved me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one. God bless you. We thank God for this ministration today. Praise the Lord. <laughs>